All right, everybody, we're streaming uh, about the full moon tonight. Hopefully, it'll be popping up and populating here uh, momentarily, but um, we'll, let, we'll wait a second for people to kind of log in and check it out. Um, but you're going to see here in a minute once we're up and running. Making sure we're all square, streaming well. All right, everybody who's just uh, logging in to watch. We're talking about the full sturgeon moon tonight. So you probably have seen a ton of stuff online uh, about this. And there's some myth, some reality. Um, there's a little bit of truth. There's a little bit of hype. Um, but we'll talk about all of it tonight. But what I will tell you, no matter what you've seen, get outside and look at the full moon tonight. It is spectacular. Now. The terms that you're going to hear a lot of, you're going to hear super moon, you're going to hear blue moon. Super moon and blue moon are both non-scientific uh, terms. They're frankly made up, um, but they do have some scientific meaning. I mean, they have some origin for where those terms uh, come from. Super moon has kind of been something that an astrologer came up with, not an astronomer. Um, and it really just means that the moon is at perigee, which means it's at its closest approach to the earth in its elliptical orbit. This happens a lot though, that's not rare. Uh, in fact, there's four of these every year. Um, what makes it kind of interesting is when that perigee happens at the full moon cycle. So the full moon technically appears bigger, but you wouldn't notice it as a human being. You can't discern the difference if I put them side by side, but it is brighter by about 30%. And that's probably gonna be the biggest thing that most of you will notice that if you go outside tonight, the moon is brighter because of that closeness um, to the earth. So you will notice that is gonna feel and appear to be brighter in nature. And that's because um, that it potentially, you know, um, is a little bit closer. So you'll notice it being brighter. Now the blue moon part, you've heard the term once in a blue moon. What's interesting about that term is there's two definitions of that term. The most common definition, which I think most people grasp and understand, is that a blue moon is the second full moon in a calendar month. That's pretty rare. Like we don't see that happen a lot. It happens every once in a while, but to have two, two full moons in the same month, usually it happens when the month has 31 days and you get a full moon towards the beginning, like the first, and you might get one on the 30th or 31st. So they're 30 days separated and that happens. The other definition, which is why tonight's is sometimes referred to the blue moon, Today, the blue moon today isn't anything to do with the calendar month. There's a really older kind of definition. It's a really odd one, actually. It's the third of four full moons in an astronomical season, which means between the solstice and the equinox, which is kind of weird. I mean, because those are those dates change all the time. And why is it the third one and not the fourth one? It's just it's just really weird. So people will call it that but I think the blue moon thing is kind of overrated because oftentimes it's not that big a deal and the super moon part it's not that big a deal the bigger deal is that it's just a great full moon now the name sturgeon moon you're probably seeing that on, on the graphic right now sturgeon moon uh, comes from the northeastern tribes of Native Americans who this time of year sturgeon were plentiful they were easy to catch especially in the Great Lakes now every month has some kind of designation. Um, we'll show you what those are. You can see um, all these different names that we have for every kind of moon. We've got the wolf moon, the snow moon. It starts in January and every month has a name for its full moon. So um, each one of those, those moons has something to do with something happening in nature at the same time that that moon occurs. So like the snow moon in February, it snows, right? The worm moon um, usually starts to happen you know, in March. Uh, where we start to see the worms come out the pink moon the flowers coming out in april flower moons may strawberry but you know you get the idea um and then the corn the hunters and the beaver moon so people might remember the harvest moon well it'll it'll the october moon will be called the harvest moon if it happens um within a certain time frame of the equinox so it has to be just after the equinox um and it has to happen within a certain time frame so it all depends on on when that happens so not every every um, October full moon is called the harvest moon. It has to happen within a certain time frame 
of of you know basically the equinox so that's kind of another one that's weird but i'm going to show you what the moon looks like right now so if you happen to be um inside watching this on a phone or computer this is our dallas camera there it is um, so you can see oh, we're looking back towards charlotte and just to give you some perspective here um, that is uptown charlotte right there the airport is kind of over there you might see a bunch of blinking lights and there's our gigantic um, full moon the sturgeon full moon there in the eastern sky the cool thing about tonight is you could see some clouds out there but the clouds have been breaking up and thin thinning out the moon's going to be up there all night in fact it doesn't set till uh, after sunrise tomorrow so if you go out now go out three hours from now go out tomorrow morning anytime during the overnight hours you'll get a chance to see that full moon so it's going to start in the western horizon it'll be going up it'll go above our camera and it will go all the way and end up setting in the west opposite of the rising sun in the east in the morning so um, if you want to check that out you got some time tonight so right now i know there's some storms out there and i'll quickly show you the radar and satellite because there are some um, showers and storms in parts of the area and some of these showers and storms have obviously um, given given us some clouds they're beginning to break up and thin out a little bit so all in all i think we should be good um, in about another hour so that everybody should have clear skies but if you're watching this in eastern north carolina we still have some lingering showers and there's what we call convective debris clouds here basically clouds that are you know keeping um some leftover thunderstorm um, clouds that are out there they will thin out and break up over time now so the moon's a big story tonight right but i have some even more exciting tomorrow morning if you're up early you can not only see that moon would you see a lightning off in the distance there that's kind of cool we can see those storms in eastern north carolina watch here see those right there above my head watch right in there you might see those lightning strikes again um, those storms are actually the ones I showed you in Eastern. There you go. You see another one right there above my head. Um, that's distant lightning. Those storms are 35, maybe 40,000 feet tall. And from our camera, which is up at 1,450 feet, we're looking pretty far east. We can see the tops of those storms and the lightning. So that's kind of cool to be able to see that and see the moon tonight. But what I was getting to is that tomorrow morning, if you're up early and you look in the western sky, you'll see the, the full sturgeon moon there setting. But if you look back east from this camera right here, there could be an amazing development. We've got a SpaceX Falcon 9 launch tonight up the east coast. We're really tomorrow morning, overnight into the morning. Now the launch window, uh, the launch window is set to open at 5.36 a.m. Now SpaceX typically likes to launch at the start of these windows. So if we launch at 5.36 a.m., that is roughly an hour and 11 minutes. Um, before sunrise, which is in that kind of perfect time frame where you could get the vapor trail to be illuminated. And what do I mean by illuminated? Well, let me show you a picture I actually took of a launch a couple of years ago. This was an April launch um, about an hour before sunrise. Um, this is down in Valentine looking up these. You can actually see twilight right here as the sun is coming up here. Um, and this is coming from southeast to northeast. This is pushing up. Um, the East Coast. And so what happens is the sun is below the horizon, right? It's down here, okay? But it's shining up into the upper atmosphere. So when this is going up the East Coast, it's actually getting into sunlight and the sun is illuminating this, but it's still dark over Charlotte or dark over the Carolinas. And that gives you this amazing illuminated vapor trail. Now this can happen anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half before sunrise, but there's that magic time frame of 30 minutes to an hour before sunrise seems to be kind of the magic time frame. Um, now, it's got to launch at the beginning of this window. Look at the window up here. The window opens at 536, but goes as late as 848. And why is the window that big? Well, because they could have delays, technical delays, weather delays. So hopefully there's not a significant delay. They have some wiggle room. They could delay it, you know, for almost an hour. I think sunrise tomorrow morning is at 646. Uh, 647 excuse me i'm looking at tonight's sunset um 647 so yeah we're about you know um about you know about an hour and, and 11 minutes there so there's some wiggle room they can have a delay of 30 40 minutes and this would still be visible so this is totally something to, to look forward to tomorrow if it happens i was going to check the schedule to make sure there wasn't a delay and let me quickly do that i'm just going to check to make sure as i step off um camera here for a second i'll keep talking to you um, I just want to make sure there hasn't been any delays tonight because that's the thing about these launches. They're so frequent that they get bumped around quite a bit. And if you're not staying up to date, um, these can move in and out of ideal windows. So I'm looking at it, um, 
hasn't been any change. Tomorrow morning still scheduled for 5.36 a.m. So seven hours, 55 minutes away from this launch. So something else to look forward to tomorrow. So when you're up early tomorrow morning, um, hopefully we'll have our camera facing east. We'll catch it. Look how, see how much the moon's moving already? I can actually move the camera a little bit more. Move it up so you guys can see it. There we go. Looks like some clouds up there. You'll see this move momentarily. So tomorrow morning, um, kind of a double bonus. You'll get to see the full moon there in the western sky when you get up. And in the eastern sky, the opposite direction, you could see a spectacular SpaceX launch. So something pretty cool to look forward to tomorrow um, in the morning that we hopefully we will see um, both the moon and the launch. The launch to me is actually more spectacular. The moon is... You know, I'll be honest, the moon sometimes, that stuff's overrated. There's a full moon every month. So um, if you miss one here, you might get a chance to see one at another time. So um, there's always the potential that we could see it again, um, you know, next month, something very similar. And if I told you it was a super moon next month, you probably wouldn't even know. But there's the view. That's a gorgeous view right now looking off to the east. Um, and again, if you see the stuff about super and blue, the blue moon thing is definitely... Kind of hype and not really a big deal um, because this isn't the second full moon in the calendar month super moon thing yeah it's a made-up term but it's become kind of mainstream it just means the moon is at its closest approach to the earth and its orbit and it's that's not even that rare either it happens four times in fact this year so um yeah it seems like something that should be a bigger deal but yeah you throw all that stuff on there whatever gets you outside to look at the moon as tony rice our, our nasa ambassador says it's great so get outside check out the moon in fact um, after I'm doing this stream it's 942 I'm gonna go grab my camera go outside and try to get some pictures of this and I will be posting them on my Facebook Twitter and Instagram uh, profiles tonight um, I will also show it at the 11 o'clock news um, so if you get a chance get out there and see it tonight that's what it looks like and again if you don't if you just joined us or you're just logging into the stream and going what are we talking about here's what's happening tonight we've got the full sturgeon moon um, the sturgeon moon is the full moon in the month of august um, its peak viewing is all night long it's sometimes referred to as a super moon because it's a perigee moon meaning it's very close this is also why there's an astronomical high tide at the coast uh, i talk about king tides this week with the rip currents and ernesto the reason those tides are so high it's not just ernesto the moon it's closer to us so it, the gravity is pulling the water just a little bit more um, and that's when you see king tides um, you see those higher than average um, tides. Have you ever heard that term, astronomical high tides? It's because of nights like this. And it can happen at a new moon, too. That's the other thing. New moon can be very close to us as well, but we're, we're, um, the shadow of the Earth is uh, kind of blocking the reflection off the moon so you don't see it. Um, you can actually get astronomical high tides there as well. So head outside, check it out. It'll be up all night. It's full tonight through tomorrow morning. Technically tomorrow, it won't be full, but it'll look pretty nice, maybe 98 97%. Right now, it's about as full as you're going to get um, during nighttime hours. Have a great night, everybody. I'll see you at 11. I'm heading outside to get some pictures of the super sturgeon full moon.